I know exactly who you are. You are a game developer with some or no experience and you are looking for ways to get a job in the industry and start earning money. This video is the correct place to be. Following the next 5 steps I will show you, you will be able to generate income from game dev by getting any type of job you have ever dreamed of, being freelancer, working in a studio, etc. The key here is that you are gonna learn how to get a high paying job in the game development industry in spite of your experience. Are you ready to get a job? Let's start! As you don't have much experience, we have to firstly take your skills to the next level. There is no actual need to have a bunch of certificates, degrees, diplomas, etc. As soon as, as long as you can have the work done for the company, it will be perfect. The key here is to learn game development and how you achieve this doesn't really matter and also every person is different from each other and so there are ways they like to learn. Of course, maybe in some formal jobs, a diploma, degree, certificate, etc. may have an impact on if they hire you or not, but in most jobs, it isn't gonna be an actual difference. And also, you could start on your own, just watching some YouTube tutorials, free courses, or even pay for some courses, wherever. And then when you feel that you can actually invest in your education and go for a, a degree, a diploma, etc., you can actually do that. Nobody is saying you that you can't. The point here is that sometimes people is very worried about how they learn game development and they don't actually start. So the key point here is that you actually start learning game development in the way you feel most comfortable with. And these ways could be YouTube, paid courses in platforms like Udemy, even going to a university, whatever, just get to learn game development. So if you ask me, I firstly started with just YouTube courses that I found completely for free on their platform. Then when I started getting more experience in this field and I actually wanted to be certified with my skills, I started paying for courses. I didn't actually buy, bought a bunch of them because I, I was still getting replies on my job applications, I was still having interviews and I was still having different jobs. So I, I wasn't really thinking that a certificate or anything like that would actually uh, improve. After having good skills, create a lot of games and projects of different classes to showcase your knowledge. Once you have all the knowledge, you have taken some courses, you have actually learned how to create games. It is important to create different projects and games from different genres. And also you can experiment with 2D, 3D, etc. The point here is that you start learn learning from experience and you start to understand the different problems and how to come up to solutions while you're actually developing a game and you want to publish it in some platform. There are a bunch of platforms where you can publish your games for free. One of the most known is just this one, each.io. Here, for example, if we scroll down a little bit, you can find a bunch of games. Uh, you can publish them for completely free as these three, or you can actually charge people in order to download them. Here is your choice, but the good thing is that you can publish them for complete free. And then, of course, we have the Google Play Store, where publishing games isn't as expensive as, as for example, on the App Store, and it isn't as difficult to... So for example, these are the games that I have published on the Google Play Store. As you can see, there are a total of seven. Four of them are indie games. I'm talking about this one, this one over here, this one and this one. The other three are from Voodoo that I'm going to be talking uh, in just a second about that. So basically, I started by publishing these four games just to have a general idea, start knowing a little bit more, have something to showcase in my portfolio, resume, etc. And then when I started getting some jobs uh, and things related to that, I stopped posting here on the Google Play Store, okay? I mean on the Google Play Store on my own account, at least. And then I, I, I started uploading games again when I started working with Voodoo, okay? I'm not going to be talking about this a long time because it could be a whole video talking about that, but basically... Uh, Voodoo is one of the biggest game development companies and you can test some games with their help so these three games are the ones that I tested with them but again they weren't just uh, indie games uh, they were games that I was paid for if I do them so yes my advice here is that you use these publishing platforms such as a way of showcasing your skills 
but not a way to actually survive of these creations because for example let's go here to uh this game right here and as you can see i only get like a hundred downloads something like that and of course you can't make a living for just creating games and publishing them on google play as an indie game developer most times okay now you have good skills and have used them in projects but who actually knows you who knows your creations so it's very important to have an updated uh, cv okay in order to create your cv there are multiple ways of doing that i personally recommend doing it on canva because as you can see we have a bunch of templates that are super time saving and also ensure that your cv looks nice Again, there are plenty of videos on how to make a good CP on game development and in all areas. But well, I usually uh, recommend to have a header where you put your name, what you do, some contact info. I also put here some links to my portfolio, my LinkedIn, my Fabio profile, all my published projects, uh, a photo of you. Uh, also, you should do some about me section, your experience. And I also include the games that I have published on the Google Play Store. This is what I tell you about showcasing your games. Uh, so that people can actually, this is a button. So people that press this thing is going to uh, send them to the Google Play Store to download and test the game. Then I also included uh, the languages and technologies that I use. Some certifications that as you can see, there aren't much. The languages and just small testimonials because I didn't really know what else to put here. And then I also have my portfolio hosted in the web, okay? Basically, there are multiple ways of actually building your portfolio website. You can either uh, use some kind of website template that you may find online, for example, in Google Sites, or there are actually some uh, websites that are meant to creating uh, your portfolio, so you can investigate those things. Uh, but personally, I created mine directly from scratch using web technologies such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This is because by doing this, you can actually have 100% control over uh, your style and what is displayed and how it is displayed, literally everything, because you are creating everything uh, yourself. So basically, again, it's quite similar to your CV, but it's just somewhere where you can send this link to whoever you want, even showcase it in your CV as I have done, and they can take a deeper look into your uh, experience. So for example, here, the about me section, it's a little bit longer than the one that is in the CV. Also here, the professional experience, well, it's a little bit different. The testimonials are different, okay? It's just a more stylish way of showcasing your own things, okay? I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so we can take a look. And for example, here in the projects, I not only uh, show the project, but I only, but I also show some kind of uh, short video about the projects, so that they don't have to actually go to the Google Play, download it, whatever. And at the end, just a contacting section. At this point, everything is set up to start showing off everywhere. This means open up a LinkedIn profile, fill up all the relevant fields, and start applying for dozens of jobs as constant as possible. So for example, this is my LinkedIn profile. And again, it's quite similar to my portfolio and to my CV. But well, you actually here have, for example, your experience and this looks so, so nice, okay? Uh, you also have your certifications over there. The projects that you have worked, that are the same games I showcased uh, on my CV and portfolio and the general skills you may have. And even you have here a recommendations section, okay? So also here you can do some posting uh for example for example i shared here that i'm starting a new position as content creator uh when i reach 5000 subscribers whatever and as you can see um this is just to keep a record of what you are doing so usually when you're applying for a job they will request your linkedin profile or if you are applying through linkedin a copy of your profile is sent and most of the times they look at your profile and see whether if you have completed all the fields in your profile, being the certifications, the experience, whatever, and they may also take a look at your activity. Also here in, in the future section, uh, I also uh, pinned some posts that I did, for example, when I achieved 5,000 subscribers, because I also wrote like some kind of motivational speech over here, uh, over uh, what is actually being a YouTuber. Um, 
and well also when we collaborate with Fiverr and wherever things that I think are quite useful for a person that is just entering my profile and taking a look uh, to to check if I'm a good fit for the position I'm, I'm applying for. I'm talking about positions at uh, jobs position at LinkedIn. We can actually take a, a look here at the job section. So here you can basically look for any position you want. For example, let's look here for a Unity developer position. And well, for example, I got here senior Unity developer. Well, here I put it in Argentina, but you could put it worldwide in the United States or wherever you want it. And well, here, as you can see, we have some of them. We have other one over here. Um, but actually, for example, what I find quite useful are that you can't, for example, filter some things. For example, the experience level, which company, the job type, if it is remote, on-site or hybrid. If it has the easy apply option, this thing is super amazing because you can click here, easy apply. And as you can see, you just have to click next, next, next. And uh, um, you will actually only have to do multiple choice questions. So that is amazing. Um, and also then, for example, if you look for uh, jobs that are posting more usually than Unity developers, that of course, there is a bunch of work here. Uh, but for example, if we look for community manager post, okay, as you can see, we find a bunch of them. And also if we sort here by only cho showing the jobs that were posted on the past 24 hours, you will be able to find jobs that uh, are actually more willing to take people because you are to take you actually in because you will be one of the first persons to apply for that job. Again, you can research in your own or uh, I mean, there are complete videos on how to make the most of a platform such as LinkedIn. So just take a look at the platform and start uh, start right away applying for a bunch of jobs. And also, for example, lastly, you can turn on alerts for some search terms, for example, uh, LinkedIn will always notify me when there are new jobs rates to community manager in worldwide. So that's amazing. And also, as I was telling you, you have to showcase yourself everywhere you can. And for example, you can uh, get a go at uh, freelancing platforms such as Fiverr and Upwork. I am personally on Fiverr. I found it that it's, it, has been the, it has been the most effective, at least for me. Basically, here you have all the services that you offer. You set your own price ranges and that's all that you have to do. Then people will start looking for your services and they will probably start hiring them. And now the question is, what do you do in the meantime of looking for a job? Because, yeah, you may have your LinkedIn profile optimized. You are applying for jobs. You have your own Fiverr profile. You have there your services. And well, what do you do in the meantime is the question. Of course, besides applying, besides constantly being updated, your gigs with different thumbnails, different price ranges or whatever, you have to keep learning, creating games and showing off everywhere you can, you can and keep everything updated. And when I say keep everything updated, I mean posting LinkedIn about progress or achievements that you may have got. For example, if you have completed a course, if you have created a game or whatever, share there with your network just a post saying that you have created this thing. This message may get to some hiring managers or even some other developers that are willing to pay you in order to create a game or to help to help them with their projects. And then you have to keep your CV and portfolio updated with the courses you took and the new projects you created. Following these five steps I show you, it is most impossible that you don't get a job eventually. If you do all these things correctly, it is just a matter of time while you keep applying them, of course, that you get your first approval. So don't be discouraged if you didn't get it as fast as you thought because you can be sure that you are doing everything that you can to achieve it. So keep it up and see you in the next one. Bye bye.